Hello everyone. In this video, I want to show you how to set up a chain and how to set up different chain styles for constraint layout in Android. I'm going to show you how to do this three different ways. The first way will be with XML in the design editor. And the second and third ways will be using Java OOP or object oriented programming at runtime. The two different ways that I'll show for this include using the constraint set convenience class. And then secondly, using constraint layout .layout params directly. In this video, I'm assuming that you have some experience with constraint layout already. If that's not the case, or you could use a refresher, please check out some of my previous videos where I've shown how to set up constraint layout in XML and in Java OOP. What I have open here is the developer documentation training for constraint layout. It says build a responsive UI with constraint layout. I'm going to skip ahead to the section on chains so you can get a sense for what we're going to do in this video. Control linear groups with a chain. A chain is a group of views that are linked to each other with a bi-directional position constraints. The views within a chain can be distributed either vertically or horizontally. Okay, and then there are a few different styles for distributing extra space vertically if we're talking about a vertical chain or horizontally if we're talking about a horizontal chain. All right, so there's this nice diagram over here, uh, one, two, three, four, for chain styles spread, spread inside, weighted, and packed. So we'll see that by default, when we create a chain, we'll get spread. The views are evenly distributed after margins are accounted for. This is the default. Then I'll show you how you can set up the different styles. We'll do spread inside and packed. And then for further reading, you can take a look at weighted. All right, so let's get started with doing this in XML. In a previous video, I created this simple two by two grid of buttons. I ended the demo by having the buttons all match constraints for their width and their height, which means that the buttons all filled the available screen space. I've since reverted these back to all wrap content for width and height so that we can see the chain styles in action. There has to be extra space for us to see the difference in the chain styles. All right, so if I click on one and two, you can see, I'll zoom in a little bit here, you can see one and two form a chain. We get this nice visual depiction of the chain here looking truly like chain links in the XML design editor. You can see I'm in the design editor here. All right, with one and two selected, I want to right click, go to chains, horizontal chain style, and see that I can choose from spread, spread inside, or packed. What we're seeing right now is spread. So let's see spread inside where the available space is going to be put inside or in between the views instead of equally on either side. Now they're pushed out to the edges of the screen and all that space is pushed to the inside. Let's do this again and let's take a look at packed where they'll be adjacent to each other in the middle and all the extra space will go to the outside of the chain. Now let's do this for three and four. And then let's do this for one and three, which have a vertical chain relationship. And this is going to group all four buttons right into the center of the screen, packed in nice and tight. I don't have a chain between two and four, so I don't need to change the vertical chain style for two and four to end up being packed in the middle as well. How I set up two and four are essentially with vertical alignment constraints. So you can see two's top goes to one top and then two's bottom goes to one bottom. Same thing for four to three. All right, so this is an interesting look for our two by two grid. Let's zoom out a bit here so you can see it. Now that we have our two by two grid of buttons set up as a packed chain, let's take a look at the XML real briefly just so we can see what's going on behind the scenes. So here's button one. It's the first button in the first horizontal chain and in the vertical chain. So it gets to specify the chain style. So here you can see horizontal chain style packed and here you can say, see vertical chain style packed. Now let's go look at the remaining buttons. There's no chain styles on button two or button four because they are not the start of any chains, but there is a uh, horizontal chain style packed on button three because it is the starting view of the second row's horizontal chain. 
All right, I just want to show this real briefly so that you could see the XML behind what we just did in the design editor. I want to do what we just did again, but this time using object-oriented programming at runtime. So let's head over to some code that I wrote in a recent video. We've got my constraint layout. This is a custom constraint layout class. I'll show you the relationship right here, inheritance. My constraint layout inherits from constraint layout. So in a previous video, we went through uh, approach number two in my notes here, which is using the constraint set convenience class to indirectly manipulate constraint values. And then in another video, I went through and adapted the solution to two to not use constraint set and instead manipulate the constraint values directly with constraint layout dot layout out params. So these two here are essentially our second and third approaches I'm going to show you for how to set up horizontal and vertical chains and chain styles programmatically. All right, so let's start with approach number two, constraint set, because this is the preferred approach. So here on line 35, I'm calling a method hard-coded two by two grid of buttons. Here's hard-coded two by two grid of buttons. All right. I have four buttons programmatically set up and add to the constraint layout. They are all fully constrained, which means I do have the bidirectional relationships that we saw in XML coded up here programmatically. But I don't have a chain created. I need to create a chain explicitly in order to set its style. So let's head over the documentation to see what method we can use in order to achieve this goal. All right, so here's the constraint set documentation. There is a create horizontal and create vertical chain method, methods available for us. Here are the parameters that are required, a left ID, a left side, a right ID, a right side, and then an array of integers representing IDs of views that should go in the chain. And then optionally, a uh, array of floats for the weights specifying how to distribute the extra space according to weights, and then the style. And the style here is where we can specify if we want spread, spread inside, or if we want packed. All right, so let's try this out. Let's create a horizontal chain so that our one and two buttons can be packed or spread inside, just like we did with XML. I'm going to run this so you can see a baseline of what we're starting with, and then we'll run it again and make sure that our chain is applied and our chain style is applied as well. We don't have that instant nice preview we have with the design editor when we're doing this programmatically. All right, so here we go. One, two, three, four, exactly what we started with in XML, but we're doing this all programmatically. All right, so I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom. Let's start setting up our horizontal chain for button one and button two. So first let's make an array to store both of their IDs. We'll need this to pass in for the chain IDs here. Let's do horizontal chain IDs one, because we'll need two of these, one for the first row and one for the second row. So let's do button one dot get ID and same thing for button two. All right, now we'll call create horizontal chain on constraint set. All right, so we'll pass in our left ID. So this will be the parent. Then we'll pass in our second argument, the left side, so the anchor point. So this will be the left of the parent. Then we'll do the same thing for the right. And then lastly, our chain IDs, null for the weight since we're not gonna do a weighted chain, and then style, and we'll do packed. So it looks like exactly what we previewed in XML. All All right, let's run this. And here we see one and two packed in the middle. 
So we're one step closer to reproducing what we did in XML. All right, I'm going to copy this and redo this for horizontal chain IDs to our second row. There they are. All right, now we just need to do the horizontal, or excuse me, well, now we just need to do, now we just need to do our vertical chain between one and three. So instead of left and right, we'll be doing top and bottom. And there we have it. We've reproduced our packed two by two grid. All right, let's do this one more time. This time we're gonna do this without using the constraint set convenience class. So if I scroll way, way, way up, I'm going to uncomment my method that doesn't use constraint set and comment my method that does. So now all I have to do in my hard-coded two by two grid of buttons is what we just did with constraint set, but not using constraint set. And it actually isn't as tricky. So let's take a look at the documentation. So it looks like on a constraint layout dot layout params object, I can set a horizontal chain style and we're good to go. So we have chain spread, chain spread inside and chain packed. So let's do this starting on button one. All right, so let's set this up. Layout params one dot horizontal chain style and we'll set it to be constraint layout dot layout params dot chain packed. All right, let's run this. Recall that we're starting over with our default two by two grid. And now we see one and two push together, looks good. Let's do the same thing for three and four and then one and three. So three is the starting view in our second horizontal chain. So let's do layout params three. And then one is our starting view in our vertical chain. So I'm gonna come back up here, paste, and do vertical chain style. All right, let's run that. And just like that, they are packed in the middle. So there's three different ways to specify that your views belong to chains and change their chain style. Well, I hope you learned a lot in this video and recall all the documentation that we took a look at in case you wanna learn more. That's it, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.